we will continue in this class with source coding. So, this is the third lecture on source coding. So, so far in source coding we have covered, we have seen why we sh should do source coding and then we have uh, seen different uh, desirable properties of source codes like uniquely decodable property and then um, prefix property and we have seen one particular source coding technique called Huffman code and we have in the last class um, we have seen craft inequality, we have proved craft inequality. Craft inequality gives us a condition of uh, condition for existence of a prefix code of certain given lengths. So, given certain lengths if craft inequality is satisfied by those lengths then a prefix code exists otherwise a prefix code does not exist with uh, those lengths. Then we have uh, we have investigated into what kind of uh, parameters, what kind of how much compression is possible in practice. So, uh, in terms of the entropy of the source, we have seen that the uh, compression, the uh, minimum required number of bits will be in between h x and h x plus 1. And in this class, we are going to cover block wise source coding. So, we will see that uh, using blocks of coding blocks of uh, source symbols together we can achieve better compression and then we will discuss another source coding technique called Shannon Fano alias code. So, we will first go through what we have done in the previous classes. First we have seen that there are two types of source coding one is lossless where there is no loss there is no loss of information due to coding. So, typical examples of uh, lossless source coding is the all the file compression algorithms that we use in computer like uh, compress in Linux and WinGP in Windows. And then there is another class of uh, source coding techniques called lossy source coding where there is some loss of information due to compression. And uh, uh, popular standards like JPEG, MPEG for compressing uh, image and uh, video they are all lossy source coding. Then we have uh, seen that uh, using variable length coding we can achieve better compression than using fixed length representation of the source symbols. Then we have seen that um, all the we have seen that there are different classes of codes non singular but not uniquely decodable and then uh, uniquely decodable but not prefix code but uh, finally, uh, there are prefix codes. So, we actually want prefix codes because they are the most they are instantaneously decodable. So, this code was not a prefix code, but it is uniquely decodable whereas, this code is a prefix code. Then we have seen uh, Huffman coding, we have uh, discussed how to do Huffman coding and uh, so, first rearrange the probabilities in decreasing order then combine the last two probabilities again and again and assign 0 and 1 to the corresponding symbols. Then Huffman code uh, we have seen that Huffman code is a prefix code and Huffman code is also optimum in the sense that there is no code better than Huffman code in terms of average uh, average uh, code length per symbol. So, Huffman code is a is an optimum code. So, its length will be between h x and h x plus 1 average length. Then we have seen uh, we have discussed craft inequality. The craft inequality says that a prefix code with this given lengths exists if and only if this condition is satisfied by these lengths. And we have proved both the parts necessity, necessity and sufficiency conditions um, in the last class. So, necessity says that this condition is necessary for existence of a prefix code, meaning by every prefix code with these lengths should satisfy this condition. So, we have proved necessity, we have proved that any prefix code satisfies this condition. And then we have proved sufficiency, meaning by this condition is also sufficient for existence of a prefix code of these lengths. And that we have proved by constructing a prefix code with these lengths. If a set of lengths is given which satisfy this condition, then we have proved that there is a prefix code with these lengths. So, this condition is sufficient for existence of a prefix code. So, craft inequality we also made comments that craft inequality also holds for uniquely decodable codes and 
that means that whenever there is a uniquely decodable code with these lengths there is also a prefix code with these lengths because this a uniquely decodable code with these lengths exist means that these lengths satisfy craft inequality because craft inequality also holds for uniquely decodable codes and because these lengths satisfy uniquely uh, craft inequality a prefix code also exists with these lengths so this comment means that we should always use prefix code because whenever there is a uniquely decodable code with certain lengths we can also find a prefix code with those lengths so we will rather use that prefix code because we can then decode in the code instantaneously also we have seen that equality in the craft inequality means that the code exhausts all the nodes at the highest level of the code tree that we have seen uh, in the last class and then we have discussed what is optimal code a code will be called optimal if there is uh, no better code for the same random variable better in the sense that there is no code with smaller average length so if an optimal code has length l capital l then we have proved in the last class that l will lie between hx and hx plus 1 so hopman code uh, Huffman codes average length will certainly lie between these two limits because Huffman code is an optimal code. So this is what we have done in the last class. Now in this class we are going to do block wise source coding. So we will see that better compression can be achieved by coding many symbols together as a block and then we will do we will discuss one another uh, source coding technique called Shannon Fano alias code. And this is also a very important code because this actually gives the principle for arithmetic coding a very again uh, very important source coding technique and then we will solve some exercise in this class. So let us start with block wise source coding. Let us first see that uh, coding symbol wise is not, not always the best thing to do. Suppose we have a binary symbol text values 1 or 0 it takes value 1 with probability 0 0.9 and 0 with probability 0 0.1 suppose. Now what is the best symbol wise code for this random variable? The code can is 1 0 you have no, no other choice you need all at least 1 bit per symbol to represent the random variable and so only choice you have is 1 0 but this will require 1 bit of average length whereas the entropy of the source is 0 0.469 bits. So, uh, this is also the Huffman code this is the optimal code for this random variable. So this is not really giving us any compression. So symbol wise coding can assure we have seen that this average length length less than equal to hx plus 1 in this case hx is this we are achieving average length 1 which is between this and this plus 1 as we see between 0 0.469 and, and 1.469. So, source coding theorem on the other hand says that you can always code a random variable such that the average length goes tends to hx meaning by uh, if hx is this then we can code uh, this random variable with average length as close to this as we want meaning by suppose we want entropy is this so it cannot average length cannot be less than this but suppose we want 0 0.4, 0 0.47 we want average length 0.47 source coding theorem says that there is a source code for this random variable which will achieve average length 0.47 because 0.47 is greater than this so any length greater than hx can be achieved by a source code but how to do that coding we see that with symbol wise coding that is if you code one symbol at a time independently then there is uh, this is not possible average length the best average length you can get is one bit. So that can be done this can be achieved by doing block wise source coding. What is the idea? The idea is that the source is generating all these symbols one after another these are all identical and independent random variables. Okay? And um, independent and identically distributed random variables uh, in short it is called IID. So these are all IID. Now you instead of coding x1 and x2 and xc they, uh, independently we code x1 to xn we are taking a block of n symbols together 
the next block of n together next block of n together this way and then coding this block of n symbols together into one bit string. So, how will I how will we do the coding? We will take this whole block of random variables as a single random vector a random variable. So, it will take many different values for example, if x 1 x 2 each is binary then this will take 2 to the power n possible values all possible n bit patterns. So, then they will all have some probability each n bit pattern will have some probability based on the probability of x 1 probability distribution of x 1 x 2 etcetera. So, we can find out those probabilities and then do coding source coding for this this block of n symbols together. So, this block will give us one code word this block will give us another code word and so on and this will be our code stream. So, if we do coding this way we can see that we can get better compression and we will see this in a while. So, this is how using block wise source coding we can achieve for uh, we can achieve this average length average length tending to h x for any discrete memoryless source. So, what is the idea we have a source sequence source is generating several random variables a sequence of random variables one after another. Now, instead of coding one symbol at a time we are taking a block of n symbols together next block of n symbols together and so on and finding out the probability distribution of a block of n symbols not every symbol independently. So, for binary random variable if you take say 4 bits at a time then every 4 bit pattern 1 1 0 1 will have some probability because 1 will have some probability and 0 will have some probability. So, we can compute the probability of 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 etcetera. So, we can find out the probability distribution of the n bit patterns and then do source coding of n symbols together. So, by doing that we can actually achieve better compression as we see uh, in this slide. Suppose we combine n symbols together like this x t to x t plus n minus 1 there are n symbols here and consider it as a single source symbol. Then entropy of this vector random vector is n times h x because each has entropy that is the average information h x. So, and all of them are independent and identically distributed. So, the entropy of n symbols together will be n times h x. Then if we find an optimal code for this random vector. So, this is a, this is like a single symbol now we can find a random vector uh, the, uh, we can find an optimal code for this random vector and we can we will get suppose a length l n. Then we know from what we did in the last class that this l n will be in between entropy of this and entropy of this plus 1 and what is the entropy of this random vector it is n times h x. So, this optimal code length will be in between n times h x and n times h x plus 1. Okay. Now, per symbol what is the uh, code length we have used average code length per symbol is now l n by n because for n symbols we have l n number of bits to represent this n symbols. So, per symbol on average we have l n by n number of bits. So, now if we divide all these terms by n what do we get? We get h x is less than equal to l because l n by n is l that is the average code length per symbol per actual source symbol this. So, we get h x is less than equal to l less than equal to h x plus 1 by n. So, now per symbol what is the code length we have got? We have got between h x and h x plus 1 by n previously by doing symbol wise coding we got 1 here. So, now this this length will be certainly nearer to h x than what we could get by doing symbol wise coding because that was between h x and h x plus 1 and this is between h x and h x plus 1 by n a 1 by n is smaller than 1. So, it is closer to h x. 
So, by increasing n we can see that L can be taken as close to H x as we wish because by increasing n this will this side also will tend to H x. So, L will tend to H x because it is in between H x and H x when n turns to infinity. So, L will tend to H x. So, this in fact this uh, actually will give us the limiting um, optimum compression that is that is uh, given by source coding theorem. So, L will tend to H x as n tends to infinity. So, what we have done is by taking blocks of symbols together we have seen that the optimal code length per symbol will be in between H x and H x plus 1 by n. So, as n tends to infinity, so as we increase the block length, we will get uh, the average code length per symbol will tend to H x. So, by increasing the uh, block length, we actually go, we actually achieve a average code length nearer and nearer to the entropy of the source. So, that is what source coding theorem says that it is possible to do so and we have seen how to do it. Okay. Then we have uh, these are these we have already discussed. Now, from previous slide we also see that Huffman code can be used to encode optimally with L tends to H x as N tends to infinity. That means, we can instead of doing so, Huffman coding for every symbol. Now, we can combine n symbols together and do Huffman coding for blocks of n symbols. And then as we increase n, our Huffman code will give us L tends to H x per symbol. Per symbol, the average code length will tend to H x. So, that can be achieved by Huffman code itself because Huffman code is optimal. Now, what is the disadvantage of Huffman code? One disadvantage is that Huffman code requires computation of the probability mass function for every possible symbol values. So, if we have a block of n symbols, we are doing Huffman coding for a block of n symbols together and every symbol suppose takes m values, m may be 2 for binary source. Okay. Every symbol takes m values, then we have n number of symbols together. So, what is the possible, num what is the number of possible values? for n length block it is m power n. So, m values for each symbol that power the block length that is the number of values the block of n symbols can take. So, we need to compute m power n number of probabilities to do Huffman coding and that is a huge task if n is large. We are saying we are talking about n tends to infinity. So, we are going to take large block length. So, that is a huge task to compute all the probability mass uh, all the probabilities. Then we cannot apply this uh, techniques Huffman code for sources with unknown statistics. There are practical sources for which the statistics is non, not known beforehand. So, we cannot apply Huffman coding for that kind of sources. Okay. So, now we will discuss one uh, another technique source coding technique called Shannon Fano alias code or is also called arithmetic code. It is in fact, this is a this is this gives us the principle behind arithmetic coding. We will see arithmetic coding in the next class, but we will discuss the principle behind it in this class. So, Shannon Fano alias code. How do we go about it? Suppose the source symbol takes source random variable takes so many values. In this case we have taken 8, 8 values 0, 1 to 7. We write them in some sequence, in some order and then we know what is the cumulative distribution function of the random variable. It is defined this way, cumulative distribution function the value at 3 for example, is nothing but the probability that the random variable takes value less than equal to 3. So, probability of 0 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 2 plus probability of 3 that is the value here. So, if you plot a cumulative distribution function of a discrete random variable, you will get a staircase function like this. 
okay. it is it will be a, an increasing function because at every place it can only increase it is the sum of the probabilities of previous values. So, it will increase and the highest value will be 1 it will saturate to 1 it will start from 0 and it will go to 1. Okay. This is the this is the uh, cumulative distribution function of the random variable. Now, suppose we have some value x and we obviously, this this jump is the probability of x, because at x the value is here at x minus 1 the value is here. So, the probability this is nothing but the cumulative distribution function of x is the sum of the probabilities till x and whereas, the value here is sum of the probabilities till x minus 1. So, what has increased here is only the probability of x. So, this jump is nothing but probability of x. So, this is probability of 1, this this amount, this quantity is probability of 1, this quantity is probability of 2 and so on. Now, we will see how to encode the value x. If the random variable takes x the value x, what will be the code word? We will give a way of computing that code word. Okay. So, we have seen that this is f x the cumulative distribution function value at x, this is the value at x minus 1 that is nothing but f x minus p x, p x is the probability of x. And we see suppose we take the midpoint here that is f x minus half of p x, this is the midpoint of this jump. So, okay. Then we compute this quantity, we know p x, we compute log of 1 by p x and we have seen beforehand that to do to design a good code, we should in fact take lengths which are proportion which are same as which is same as log of 1 by p x. Now, we are not taking exactly that because this may be fraction. So, what we do is we take the first we take the ceiling of this ceiling means again the, the, the smallest integer above this number. So, like if this number log of 1 by p x is 2.5 the ceiling will be 3, if it is 3.9 the ceiling will be 4. So, this ceiling plus 1 we increase it by 1. So, that is the length we take for the code for x for the code word for x we take this length. So, it is slightly more than what we should take for optimal codes okay. and then we express this quantity as a binary sequence. So, this is the f x minus half of p x this number this will be a fraction 0 point something because it is between 0 and 1. So, it will be 0 point something, but we express that in as a binary number. So, when we express it as a binary number, what will you get? We will get some binary sequence after point. So, 0 0.1101011011 like that. So, some binary sequence after the point we will get. So, that is the binary representation of that number. Now, we take only L x number of bits after the point. So, that number is denoted here by uh, this. This number quantize to L x uh, bits. So, we take only L x number of bits after point. So, we basically truncate this number after L x number of bits. So, we have suppose L x equal to 4, then that number is 0 0.1101100. 0, 0. Okay. Then what do we do? We truncate this number to 4 bits. So, 0 0.1101. 0 that is the new number. Certainly, that is less than the original number. So, this number is less than this because this is the truncated number. So, this is somewhere here and we will see that this cannot go below this. Okay. In the next slide, we will see that this number will not go below this and because when we take a less number of bits, we are basically uh, dividing the this number this interval 0 to 1 into 2 power L x number of parts. 
okay, because how many LX bit combinations are there? 2 power LX, so many combinations are there. So, um, we are taking one number from this interval or the, one number from those 2 power LX divisions of this interval and basically this part is nothing but the one level that is nearest to this below, below this. Okay. So, we divide this interval into 2 power LX number of parts and immediately below this there will be some level, we take that level that is this number, that will be this number. So, so what is the, this difference cannot be more than the each uh, size of each uh, quantized level. So, we have 2 power LX parts here. So, 1 by 2 power LX is the height of each section. So, this difference cannot be more than that uh, minus uh, that 1 by 2 power LX that is 2 power minus LX. So, and 2 power minus LX is equal to we can see that LX is the ceiling of this number plus 1. So, we replace that LX by this and then we see that ceiling is certainly greater than this number. So, this number will be less than if we remove the ceiling because this quantity is greater uh, less than this quantity. So, minus of that is greater than this quantity. So, this whole number is greater than this and this is 2 power minus log 1 by p x minus 1, minus 1 is nothing but half and what is 2 power minus log 1 by p x? Minus log 1 by p x is log p x and 2 power that is just p x. So, it is p x by 2. So, this number is less than equal to p x by 2 whereas, whereas this difference is p x by 2, this difference. So, so uh, this difference, the uh, quantity by which this number is reduced by taking only, only LX bits, that difference will be less than equal to the step size of the quantization that is 2 power minus LX and 2 power minus LX is less than equal to P X by 2. So, this difference is less than equal to P X by 2. So, this will not go below this level that is the idea. So, we know that this number is in between this range. Okay. So, we have seen how to take the code basically represent this number in a binary form and then take LX number of bits after the points point and so in this case say suppose LX is 6 and suppose this is this and some uh, so 6 bits we have taken 6 bits of the original number here and so this is the code for x this 6 bits after point 0 1 1 0 0 1 we have taken 6 bits of the of the midpoint here okay so we have seen how to get the how to construct the code code word for x so for every value here we will take the code words so for 1 we will get one code word for 0 we will get for for every place for every value we will get a code word because you know the cumulative distribution function and these probabilities. Okay, now, we have seen how to get the code words. Now, we need to see, we need to get convinced that this is uniquely decodable and in fact, we will show that this code is a prefix code. So, let us proceed towards that. We have this number, we will show that this code we have obtained this way will be a prefix code we have got this. Now, we add 1 to the last bit of this. So, we have point something something some number. So, we have this number and then suppose this number is point uh, we have taken point 0 1 1 0 0 1 this number. We add 1 to the last bit 
So, what do we get? We get 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So, we construct another number. So, what have we done? We have added basically like this. We add 1 to the last bit meaning by we add this quantity to this quantity. So, what is this quantity? What is the value of this? This is nothing but 2 power minus L x. That is in this case it is 2 power minus 6 because value of first bit is 2 power minus 1, val value of the second bit after point is 2 power minus 2 etcetera. And so, the value of the L x number of bit at position L x after point is 2 power minus L x. So, we have added 2 power minus L x to the to this quantity. So, and we have added 2 power minus L x and we have already seen that 2 power minus L x is less than equal to P x by 2. So, the new number will be also below this level because this difference is greater than equal to P x by 2. So, we have added 2 power minus L x to this quantity which will be below this number. So, this is the new number we get. Okay. Now, observe one thing that we have we first had one level that is this one 0 0.011001. Then we added 1 to the last bit, we get another level that is this 0 0.011010. We have added 1 to the last bit and we have got this. Now, all the numbers of which this part is the prefix. Okay. Suppose we take 0 0.011001 and then some other bits 1 0 1 1 extra some extra bits. Then this number because it starts with this number, this number will lie somewhere here because this number will be between this number and this number because this is certainly less than this number because this number is obtained by adding 1 to this bit. Okay. So, any number of which this is a prefix will be somewhere here in this interval. So, meaning by any number of which this number is a prefix will be in this range in this interval. So, we get such an interval for every possible symbol values. So, we will get one interval here, one interval here. Now, we can see clearly here that this code will be a prefix code because the code word we obtained here, this is not a prefix of this or this is not a prefix of this because this number does not belong in this region. So, this is uh, this cannot be a prefix of that because all the numbers of which this is a prefix is in this range. Similarly, this is also a not a uh, prefix of this number. So, the code words we get this way will be a prefix code. So, obviously, it will be an uniquely decodable code. Okay. So, just now what I was saying we add 1 to this bit we get this number. So, all the numbers in between this range are the numbers of which this is prefix or other numbers cannot be a prefix of uh, this cannot be a prefix of any other number which is not in this range. So, this way we can argue that this code will be a prefix code. Now, something interesting we have so far seen that the code is prefix code. So, what else are you interested in in a code? We have to check that it is uniquely decodable. So, we have seen that because it is a prefix code then we have to see what is the compression how much compression we get using that code meaning by what will be the average length of the code words. And what is that? We have to basically take the average of all the possible code words. So, that is what we do here. We take the average length, this is summation of P x i L i, L i is the length of the ith code word. Now, L i we have seen is nothing but this. We have taken L i that way. Now, we take summation, we break it here. So, P x i times this plus 1 because summation P x i is 1. Now, this ceiling is less than equal to this quantity plus 1 
because if this number is 2.5, ceiling is 3. So, 3 is less than 2.5 plus 1 that is 3.5. Certainly, between any number and if you add 1 to it, between those two numbers there will be 1 integer. Okay? So, that integer next to any number will be less than that number plus 1. So, so this is less than log 1 by p x i plus 1. So, we have done that. So, 1 another 1 comes out of this summation because summation p x i is equal to 1. So, we get 2 here 2 plus this and what is this quantity? This is nothing but h x. This is the formula for entropy of the source. So, this is h x plus 2. So, certainly this is suboptimal because we do not we do not know whether this will be less than h x plus 1 also. What we have guaranteed is that L will be less than or equal to h x plus 2. So, this code is possibly suboptimal. This is suboptimal, but this is not so bad because now if we suppose combine many symbols together as we have discussed before, then let us see what code length we get per symbol on average. So, now suppose we combine n symbols and do San and Fano alias code for a block of n symbols together. Then the average code length L will be ln by n because this is for n symbols. So, divide by n is the per symbol code length. This is less than or equal to h x plus 2 by n because l n is less than or equal to n times h x plus 2 because n times h x is the entropy of n symbols together. So, the average code length l n for n a block of n symbols will be less than or equal to h x uh, n times h x plus 2 because entropy is n times h x. So, L which is ln by n will be less than or equal to h x plus 2 by n. We divide this ln by n, n h x by n is h x and then 2 by n and this will tend to h x as n tends to infinity. This is the interesting part. So, uh, if we instead of coding symbol wise, if we take n symbols together, the average code length we get per symbol will be h x plus 2 by less than or equal to h x plus 2 by n. So, now if we take n tends to infinity meaning by if as we increase the block length, the Shannon Fano alias code will give us a co average code length per symbol tending to h x and that is that is good because it says that using Shannon Fano alias code also we can we can achieve what is guaranteed by source coding theorem. So, it is asymptotically optimal as n tends to infinity we actually get optimal coding L tends to h x. Okay. So, we have done in this class block wise source coding, why we need block wise source coding with an example we have seen that uh, there are certain sources for which using just symbol wise coding we get no compression. Whereas, we can do block wise coding and block wise, block wise coding will give us for any source we can get this optimal code length tends to h x. This we can achieve for any discrete memoryless source using block wise coding. And we have seen that uh, because Huffman code is an optimal code we can achieve this limit using Huffman code itself, but Huffman code has certain disadvantages. One is that it can it needs to compute m power n probabilities, uh, there is something uh, huge task and we cannot apply this technique for sources with unknown statistics. Now, so far we have also discussed how to do Shannon Fano alias code. We have, we have taken first the cumulative distribution function. This jump here is the value of probability of x at any x. If you take 6, this jump is the probability of the value 6. So, we have seen how to construct the code word for x. Similarly, for every value we can construct code word. We take first the midpoint, then take binary representation of the midpoint here and take only L x number of bits while L x is computed this way. Then this will be a number below this because that is truncated. This number is truncated after L x bits and then this take L x number of bits those L x number of bits here. This is the code for x and we have seen that this coding will give us a 
uh, prefix code. Now this is uh, this also so far as we see will require computation of px and fx for every possible value. So what disadvantage we have talked about for Huffman code is also valid so far in this coding. But we will see in the next class how this can be avoided and how this technique in general can be applied to sources with unknown statistics also. Some modeling of the statistics can be done. And we have seen that Shannon Fano alias code is suboptimal in general, but it is asymptotically optimal meaning by if we combine n symbols together and as n tends to infinity, we will achieve a code length per symbol tends to hx with Shannon Fano alias code also just like Huffman codes. Though Huffman code will be better if you do symbol wise coding. For any block of n symbols probably Huffman code, Huffman code is optimal, but Shannon Fano alias code is not optimal. But as n tends to infinity, they will both perform similarly. They will both achieve, they will both tend to hx. So that is uh, something good for Shannon Fano alias codes also. Okay. This is the, this is what we have done in this class. Now we will uh, solve certain exercise. So this exercise is that it says a source generates 5 symbols. So the random variable the source generates takes 5 values. Each value has some probability. Now these are the probabilities given 0 0.2, 0 0.05, 0 0.45, 0 0.15 and 0.15. Then which of these statements are true? There is a binary uniquely decodable code for this source with average length equal to 2. Now whether there is a source, there is a binary uniquely decodable code with this length or not that depends on the that can be found out by taking the by computing the entropy of this uh, source. So we need to compute the entropy of the source. Okay, we have it here. The entropy of the source can be this the formula is simple px times log 1 by px summation of all such terms. So we take 0 0.2 probability 0 0.2, 0 0.05, 0 0.45, 0 0.15 but that is 2 times. So 2 times that and when we compute this we get 2.02. So hx the entropy of the source is 0.02. So this statement that there is a uniquely decodable code with average length 2 is false because the entropy of the source itself is 2.02. So we cannot have a code with average code length less than the entropy of the source. So this statement is false. Then we have there is a binary uniquely decodable code for this source with average length less than 3.2. Now what is the entropy of the source? 2.02 and we know that there is always a code with average code length less than hx plus 1. So what hx is 2.02 so there is always a code with length 3.02 the entropy is 2.02 so there will be a code certainly with average code length less than 3.02. So there, this is true that there is a uniquely decodable code with average length less than less than 3.2. The next statement is there is no binary uniquely decodable code for this source with average length less than 2.5. Now can you conclude about the truthness uh, of this from the entropy? Entropy is 2.02. This number is 2.5. This is between 2.02 and 3.02. That means this may possibly be average length of a code for the random variable because we know that the optimal code length is between entropy and entropy plus 1. This number is such a number is it is between entropy and entropy plus 1. So this can be possibly a code length for, for a uniquely decodable code for this random variable. But we so this 
needs to be verified. We cannot guarantee that this will be certainly a code because this is between this, but the optimal code may not have this length. So, we need to check, we need to construct an optimal code and see what length it achieves. And we can do that because Huffman code is optimal code and we know how to construct Huffman code. So, let us see, let us construct the Huffman code for this random variable and see what average length we get. So, the code length, uh, the probabilities are 0 0.45, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0.15 and then 0.05. So, first we combine these two, we get 0.2, probability 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, then 0 0.15. So, we had 0 here and 1 here. Then we combine these two, we get 0 0.35, 0 0.35. So, we add uh, 0 to this. So, 0 to both this and 1 to this. Then we combine these two, we get 0.55 and this comes as it is. So, we add 0 here, 0 0.35, 0 0.35 comes from all these 3 and 0.45 uh, and 0 0.2 gets 1 then so we get uh, we add 0 to all this and 1 to here. So, this is the Huffman code for this random variable and what is the average code length? This is 0 0.45 times 1 plus 0 0.2 times 2 plus 0.15 times 3 plus 0.15 times 4 plus 0 0.05 times 4. When you compute this, we will see that this is 2.5. Now, Huffman code itself has code length 2.5. So, certainly there is there cannot be a better code. So, there is no binary uniquely decodable code for this source with average length less than 2.5. So, this is there is no binary uniquely decodable code for this source with average length less than 2.5. So, this is true, this is not correct. Uh, there is no better code, so this statement is true. There is no binary uniquely decodable code better than Huffman code. Next exercise is using craft inequality show that there is a prefix code with lengths this. This can be checked because uh, you simply compute you simply compute this summation to power minus l i and l i's for l i's you can put these values 6, 6, 5, 4, 4, 4 this and then you will see that this is actually equal to 1. So, this is this uh, this satisfies craft inequality and construct such a code. Now, we have seen in the proof of craft inequality that uh, given certain lengths which satisfy craft inequality, a prefix code can be constructed. The proof was by construction. So, we can in fact use that construction itself to construct such a code. So, let us do that. So, we had uh, we have to the, the maximum code length is C 6. So, we have to draw a code tree with 6 levels. So, 6 levels means the number of maximum number of uh, branches at the last level will be 2 power 6 that is 64. So, we have we will have last branches will come like this. So, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There will be 32 such, uh, there will be 64 ends here and then you can construct like this. So, to go on constructing, it will go on, there will be 64 such ends and then you have to do this way. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six levels. It will be like this. From here, now you have to choose the code as we saw in the proof of the proof of craft inequality that we have to start from the smallest code length 2. So, 2 code lengths mean uh, a code word of length 2 will be a node at level 2, 1, 2. So, take the first node at level 2. So, this is one code word. So, what is this code word? This is 0, 0. So, we have one code word 0, 0. Then take a code of code word of length 3. So, we take a code word of length 3 at level 3, the first node available. Remember that this part is not available anymore. This is disqualified by this. At level 3, we have this one. This is 0, 1, 0. Similarly, as we go on taking, we will see that we can get this 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0. These are 3 code words of length 3, then four, 5 code words of length 4. So, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 0. These are the 5 code words of length 4, then 1 code word of length 5. So, you get 1 1 1 1 0 is 1 code word of length 5, then 2 code words of length 6. So, we have this code. So, as we take from the tree also we will get this code. We have constructed such a code. Now, specify a set of symbol probabilities such that this code gives the average length equal to h x and we have seen that in the section with uh, when we discussed optimal codes we saw that these are the probabilities to be taken. So, you just take these lengths and compute these probabilities. If we compute these probabilities and take this code you can see that this will achieve, this code will achieve average code length equal to h x for this particular, this particular source probabilities. There are some other exercises, these uh, we will solve later in the later classes. This can be solved by, uh, this is given as homework also, you can note down these numbers, this is from Thomas and Covers book 5.5, exercise number 5.5. This is from Mackey's book, XI number 5.21, and this is from again Mackey's book 5.22. Try to solve these problems as an exercise. In the next class, we will do arithmetic coding. We will see that using Shannon Fano alias codes principle itself, we can, we need not, without computing source probabilities explicitly, we can do arithmetic coding. And this code is universal, works for any source probabilities and it is asymptotically normal because it is basically Shannon Fano alias code. So, it is asymptotically normal and we will see another source coding technique called lempel jeev coding which does not require computation of probabilities at all. This is a basically tabular method. So, we have done these two techniques, we have done these two topics in this class, we will do these two topics in the next classes. This is the end of uh, this class. See you again in the next class.